Hey Sunrise Kids, it's Mrs. Murray again, and we have a really fun lesson. And before I start, I need you to be a very observant. In the background, we have an avocado tree. So what I need you to do is to see if there is anything different that's not supposed to be there. So just star challenge for today and, and uh, this week. Um, if you view this lesson later, um, I want you just to look in the background and look around and see if something doesn't belong there. Well, let's get started. We have an awesome lesson. We're gonna talk about a couple of parables today. And the first one is gonna be the lost sheep. But um, Jerome, our pastor, is going to be teaching on the book of 1 Peter and it's the second chapter, verses 21 to 25. And I wanna read it right from the Bible. He's gonna preach on this today and then we're just gonna take a side path and go this way. <clears throat> for God called you to do good, even if it means suffering just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example and you must follow his steps. Key words, follow his steps. He never sinned nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threatened revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross, so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, we are healed. Once you were like sheep, who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. Now I want you to know right now that when we talk about our parables today, the shepherd, who's the shepherd? Well, it's Jesus Christ. Who are the sheep? That would be us. We are considered the sheep in his stories in this parable. But first I wanna do an object lesson and it's, and also a, a quick skit, so to get your giggles going too, those are important. What is this? I went to the fruit stand today. Oh my gosh, can you guys see? Can you see this right there? There's a grape missing. And I always name my grapes. Ivy, Justin, Jocelyn, Cassia, Dustin, Everly, Owen, I've got them all here, I think. Eric, Jacob, Leela, Lila, Paisley. Oh my gosh, look how many. Oh my gosh, I've named them all, but guess who's missing? Jerry's missing. I wonder where Jerry is. Jerry, Jerry, I name all my grapes and I don't want to miss any of them. They're very special to me. So let's talk about grapes before we jump into our lesson. Grapes grow in bunches like these, just like this. I bet you guys eat lots of grapes during the summer. When we go to the grocery store or the fruit stand, we pick up a whole bunch like this and then we bag it and we move on. We don't stop and look and see if all the grapes are still there, or do we? We don't check to see if there are any stems without grapes. We found one and we found one missing. What was his name? Hmm. And we don't look for those missing grapes right there in the grocery store. There's plenty of grapes for the family and a few grapes are missing. So what? Here's the amazing thing. Oh, guys, I've got sweat in my eyes. I'm sorry. Here's the amazing thing about God that he knows exactly how many grapes were on this original bunch. Just as he knows all of us by our names. No one is lost or forgotten in God's eyes. And just like the shepherd, who seeks after the one lost sheep. God loves us all and wants to bring all of his people to the kingdom. When we are growing in Christ, we will be filled with that same love. We will have compassion for people and we will share God's love with everyone. Let's ask God to fill us with that kind of love so we can share it with all of his lost sheep. Hmm, let's do our skit, it's kind of funny. All right, now remember, because I'm the only one here, I have to be both parts. So I'm going to be Leo, the fruit lover, and I'm gonna be Jada, who's the board fruit stand clerk. All right, you guys ready? 
Okay, I'm Jada right now. Standing, I'm so bored. I wonder where my phone is. I get caught, somebody watches me with my phone. And then all of a sudden, Leo enters with a bag of grapes, just like this. And he says, Jada says to Leo, hey, hey, welcome to Somerset Fruit Stand, where it's really boring here. Did you find everything you needed? I sure did. I came in looking for these yummy red grapes and look what I found. Oh, how amazing. I can't believe you found grapes as a, at a fruit stand. <laughs> these grapes are perfect. So juicy, full of fiber. Mm. They're so good for you too. How many grapes do you have, sir? Oh, just this bunch right here. That's all I have. That's all I need. <gasps> oh, no. Where's Jerry? Jerry, says Jada. Who is Jerry? Where is Jerry? I must have lost him when I was coming up here to pay for him. Who, says Jada? Jerry, he was right here. He was right, he was right there. She put it right in front of Jada's face. She said, oh, what? Is Jada your kid? No, no, no kid. No, it's one of my grapes. Your grapes? Jerry, Jerry, where are you? You named your grapes? Yeah, I name all my grapes. Hmm. Ivy, Justin, Jocelyn. Let's see, Paisley, Lila, Leela, Eric, Steven. Uh, I, I can't remember. I think that's Jacob. Um, oh, there's Everly and Dustin. Gosh, Cassia. Uh, here is Aria. There's even Dara and Owen. There's, there's lots of them there. I could keep on going. I've named them all. Okay, I get it. The grapes have names. Okay. I love these grapes. I do, says Leo. I love them all so much. I can't leave one behind Jerry. Jerry, where are you? I said I want to talk to... Well, I told my mom. I didn't want to work at a fruit stand. Look at all these fruits. I wanted to work at McDonald's. Why would my mom let me work at McDonald's? Jerry! But no, she makes me work at the fruit stand. So Jade is all about herself. Jerry, sir, why don't you just get another grape? I don't want another grape. I love Jerry and I'm not leaving without him. Well, sir, we close at six. So if you can't find your grape, Jerry is his name. His name is Jerry. Can you help me look? If you can't find Jerry before then, you'll have to. I found him! Yay! I found Jerry! Oh, yay! I was so worried, Jerry. Oh, not as worried as I am, says Jada. Now I tell you, miss these grapes, I love them. I would never leave a single one behind. Never, says Leo. Jada, you are really crazy about those grapes. As crazy as Jesus is about me. Lady, he wouldn't leave any of us behind, ever. How much do I owe you? You know, says Jada, you love those grapes so much, it's on the house. You just take them and go. Oh, that's so kind of you. I won't ever forget this. Really, it's my pleasure. I'll be back again next week. Oh, I can hardly wait. Wow. What? I'm going to eat Jerry. What a story, what an analogy it, we're using for grapes and how much Jesus loves us, how much God loves us. Well, I want you to think about the parable of the sheep. The first fruit of the Spirit that they talk about is love. And in this parable of the lost sheep, it explains how much our God loves us. It is so exciting. But first, I want to intro to you. And it's about, have you ever seen a tree 
that tries to grow fruit. Hmm. Does a tree try to grow fruit? Either they grow fruit or they don't grow fruit. If a fruit tree has plenty of sunshine and plenty of water, it will grow fruit. The tree doesn't have to try. With plenty of water and the sun and the soil, the tree will grow and grow just like these beautiful avocado trees in the back. The orange tree, what does it grow? Right, oranges. Good job, Cassia. Okay, Owen, what does a lemon tree produce? Right, a lemon. What does a banana tree produce? Good job, Justin. The tree will grow and spread and yield more apples and oranges and bananas or whatever fruit. What did I say these trees were? This is an avocado tree. We have about seven of them or eight of them right around the house. Where do they grow? Avocados. Those are green. Green fruit about this big. If they're so yummy. One of the most famous lines in Star Wars comes from the Jedi Master Yoda. He was my favorite. And he said, do or do not. There is no try. Just as a tree does not try to grow fruit, we either grow as believers in Jesus or we don't grow. And just like a fruit tree, the Bible tells us that we grow as believers. We will yield fruit. So is God calling us fruit? Well, yeah, that's pretty important. Because remember I said we're going to talk about the fruits of the Spirit and the first fruit is love. And that's very important. And God loved us so much that he wanted to just sh show us how much he cared. And he didn't want to ever lose any of us, any of us. So in Luke 15, it talks about Jesus teaches that there shall be joy in heaven over one repentant sinner. One, not 10, not 50, not 99, but one. So I am going to show you a couple of videos right now. So you guys hold on to your seats. It's something different and something fun. So I'll come back right after the videos. All right, take care. Don't leave. We'll be right back. Then Jesus told them this story. If any of you has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will you do? 
Won't you leave the 99 in the field and go look for the lost sheep until you find it? And when you find it, you'll be so glad that you'll put it on your shoulder and carry it home. Then you'll call your friends and neighbors and say, let's celebrate, I found my lost sheep. Jesus said, in the same way, there is more happiness in heaven because of one sinner who turns to God than over 99 good people who don't need to. Jesus told the people another story. What will a woman do if she has 10 silver coins and loses one of them? Won't she light a lamp, sweep the floor and look carefully until she finds it? Then she'll call in her friends and neighbors and say, let's celebrate, I've found the coin I lost. Jesus said, in the same way, God's angels are happy when even one person turns to him. Hey, Sunrise Kids, did you have fun with the videos? I thought the animated sheep were kind of like little alien sheep. They were funny looking, but I, I know you got the gist of the story, which is important. Shepherding is a very common occupation during Jesus's time. And the people listened to this story because they knew how hard shepherds worked. They dedicated their whole life to their flock. They would risk life and limb to go save one that was lost. And that's, you know, God loved us so much too that he sent his only son to die for us. God doesn't want any of his sheep, any of them, to be lost. God loved us enough to die for us. And if we're growing in our faith, then we will love other people as he did. And remember when I talked about we need to walk in his steps. So we know he walked in love. Love was not an emotion. Love is an action. If we're growing in our faith, we will love other people the way Jesus did. We won't judge others, but we will love and care for everyone who needs love. We will produce love like fruit. And the fruit will help others come to believe Jesus as well. Those are kind of fun. Did you guys know that Abel was our first shepherd? And that's a good symbolism of, of uh, using uh, sheep as people. And we know the story, what happened there. And uh, I, I just want to say, to tie it in again with what Jerome is speaking, he's, he's going to talk about the Jesus who did no sin himself is the example of how we need to walk, even during affliction, which happens at home too, um, with our siblings and at school with our friends, outside just playing kickball. Someone could unjustly call you a cheater and it's it's really hurts. And Jesus doesn't want us to say anything back. He wants us not to judge them. He wants us just to love them. And sometimes that's hard. I want to finish with the prayer. I'm trying to find my prayer. And, um, and I, I just want us to walk like Jesus did. So my charge to you this week, guys, is I really, really, really want you to try to love others more, your brothers and your sisters, your friends, even school starting soon or homeschooling, Zooming, whatever. I want you to love them and not judge them. And if there's a situation where you're being unjustly hurt or anything, anything that's unjust, at home and with your friends or whatever, I want you to remember, um, this is something that I did when I was in, in uh, I think high school, is what would Jesus do? And remember, what would Jesus do in this situation? Try to put that first before you react. What would Jesus do? Try to go through at least three or four days before you react. What would Jesus do in this situation? And remember, that love is the most important thing that God wants us to share with our friends and our families. And, and um, that's our story today. The love. He loved us so much that he gave us his son. And I want you to love each other. Remember the charge. See if you can find something different in my tree. It's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can bring it up closer. See if you can see anything that's not supposed to be there. That's my charge too. Call me and tell me what you think is wrong that shouldn't be there. Those are avocado trees. Just for a hint. Um, I just want to tell you I love you. Miss you terribly. 
and I just know we're going to get together really soon. So peace out and have a beautiful, beautiful week and know that you can call me anytime. What's your charge? Find, tell me what, what's wrong in that picture and also to love each other and remember, what would Jesus do? Don't react. Think, what would Jesus do in that situation? So I love you, take care, and I'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye-bye.